Entre los muchos problemas ambientales que están sufriendo los océanos, como el cambio climático, la acidificación oceánica, la sobrepesca, la contaminación marina, existe uno del que no se habla tanto, pero que también tiene una gran importancia, y son las consecuencias del ruido submarino. El problema del ruido es mucho más complejo, no solo tiene que ver con los efectos que el hombre está generando por el ruido que produce, sino que también estamos modificando el sonido natural del mar. Estamos modificando los paisajes sonoros submarinos. Well, what is a soundscape? So, a soundscape perhaps is similar to a landscape, but instead of defining it by visual observation, the soundscape is defined by the sounds. Los paisajes sonoros es, son complejos y están compuestos de, de tres cosas en general. Geophonic, which is, um, if you like, um, kind of physical, natural physical sources, such as rain on the surface, um, wind generating um, waves and waves themselves, bubbles, earthquakes, um, lightning hitting, hitting the water surface, are all um, termed in this broad group of geophony. The second source of sound in the ocean is called biophony, and that is describing all the sounds coming from the aquatic animals. So animals produce sounds for a range of reasons, um, inclu including to find food, to navigate, to defend the territories, to attract mates and reproduce. Um, vocalization for marine mammals, such as whales and dolphins, are well known. But um, actually fishes, there's a lot of fishes that also produce these sounds and all the invertebrates. Uh, for example, snapping shrimps are very famous. They produce a snap sound to stun their prey, and that creates a loud cracking sound that is present in many coastal areas. Y el tercero uh, es la antropofonía, que son los sonidos hechos por los humanos. Y esto es el componente más reciente y es el componente que seguramente está cambiando más rápidamente, uh, incrementando rápidamente. Los otros también están cambiando. La geofonía por uh, por estar relacionado con el cambio climático, también está cambiando y la biofonía cambia cuando, por ejemplo, hay menos, menos cetáceos, menos ballenas, menos peces. Um, y esos son los tres componentes y ocurren todos al mismo tiempo. So, marine animals use sound. So, we know that marine mammals, but also fishes, and also some of the other species, like crustaceans, like shrimp or lobsters, they use sound. They make sound to communicate with each other, but they also listen to the soundscape. So they might listen to the sound of predators, they might listen to the sound of prey, they might listen to just the sound of the environment. So for example, the sound of um, surf, like waves breaking on the coast, might actually guide animals away from too shallow water. So a lot of that hasn't been studied, but all of the animals that we do study, or at least the vast majority of them, we find they do respond to sound. There's various way, various different ways that um, human-generated noise can affect animal, and it's basically it's it's based on a range of scales. From um, if you if you think about high-intensity sound, if the animal is close to that, then you might be looking at injury or um, changes in hearing thresholds. If the animal is further away, then you're looking at um, masking and behavioural type effects. So masking is when um, the noise that is is not specific to that animal, um, causes the inability of that animal to hear specific noises. So you can think of masking like the um, cocktail effect. Our, um, if you're at a party, if there's loud, if it's a loud party, there's loud music, everyone's shouting and yelling. Uh, if you want to talk to your mate, you've got to be closer together compared to if you're, I guess, at a double party where there's not much happening, you can kind of yell at each other across the room. For example, hunting of large marine animals like, like whales or seals, overfishing, this has led to reduced and less diverse biophony because, of course, there's less sound producing animals in the sea. Um, similarly, because of overfishing and habitat degradation, the natural sound levels of important ecosystems like coral reefs, kelp forests, mangroves, Seagrass beds have decreased as well. Um, 
And uh, yeah, if we can also add climate change to that because climate change is increasing the number of cyclones and marine heat waves, and this in turn degrade the marine habitats and uh, thus alter in turn the biophony. Some studies have shown that the predator-prey relationships change in the presence of strong ship noise. So for some animals, there's an advantage, for others a disadvantage. So in high levels of noise, predators might have a harder time finding their prey, but also prey actually might be able to hide from the predators. So the important bit here is that there's not, um, you know, who wins, who loses. The important bit is that we are shifting natural balances in the ecosystem by introducing sound. Ya quedan muy pocos sitios que son pristinos. Uh, entonces no no tenemos muy buena idea de cómo de cómo eran estos paisajes submarinos uh, sonoros antes de, de el gran incremento de ruido submarino. Entonces hay hay muy pocos. Hasta en el mar profundo se oyen se oyen barcos um, y, y el sitio que tal vez era el más pristino de todos era el Ártico por ejemplo donde al haber hielo casi todo el año no había barcos um, pero eso ha cambiado entonces ya es, es fácil um, ir de un lado del otro al Ártico y ya ya hemos hecho varios trabajos con los efectos de, de ruido en el Ártico uh, también um, y no solo hay efectos de que hay menos hielo pero también el, el, el efecto directo de, de los barcos. Así que quedan pocos, uh, pocos sitios um, donde, no, donde no haya ruido que nosotros uh, sepamos. Much of the anthropony is intensifying across the ocean. Uh, over the last 50 years, um, increased shipping uh, contributed to about 30-fold increase in the low frequency noise present along the major shipping routes, so that is massive. Um, it actually has been demonstrated that the ambient noise levels can be directly related to the global economic conditions. So if, if the economy grows, the noise grows with it. There certainly are areas where a lot of recordings have been taken, but then many, many areas where we just have not started to listen yet. For example, we know the soundscape of where I live here in northeastern New Zealand. We know that pretty well. We've been studying that pretty intensively for the last um, uh, 20, 23 years or something. So so we know that soundscape pretty well. And there's other locations around the world that people, are, that researchers are working that um, understand what's happening to that soundscape and how it's changing over time. Um, and there's other locations where um, that are hard to get to. So. Um, we got no idea of what's actually happening. So for marine protected areas, in my view, a very efficient way of monitoring these zones is by listening underwater. Acoustic monitoring um, for MPAs have many advantages. Uh, it's, you know, it's fairly easy to set up. It's low cost. Uh, it's non-invasive. Um, doesn't involve a lot of effort. Um, and yes, yeah, so as, as we said, recording the soundscape is a good way to monitor the health of the ecosystem as it records the abundance of the sound producing animals and their biodiversity. Um, and having a baseline prior to the establishment of a marine protected area and then monitor the evolution of the soundscape can give us really precious insights of how well the ecosystem is recovering, for example. And it also can act as an event detector, for example, by recording the noise of illegal fishing boats present in the MPA. It's just an example, but yes, I think the real value. Los plásticos, por ejemplo, los metales pesados, um, esos, um, esos continúan en el mar por mucho tiempo, mientras que El ruido submarino, una vez que se corta la fuente de ese ruido, uh, ya ha desaparecido. No quiere decir que los efectos no, no estén, pero por lo menos es, es bastante más fácil cortar esa fuente y afectar uh, el nivel de ruido en el mar. Aparte de eliminar el ruido, uh, de producir barcos uh, que producen menos ruido. Y, y eso existe, la tecnología existe ya para, para hacer todo eso y de limitar de cómo se explora el mar, por ejemplo. Y hay formas de hacerlo. Um, las cosas es, es obligar a las compañías a usar métodos que sean más, uh, 
que, que, que produzcan menos ruido. Existe un gran consenso entre la comunidad científica en que los paisajes en los submarinos están viéndose afectados por la actividad humana. Y estos efectos negativos están incrementándose a medida que nuestra actividad en el océano va aumentando. En este sentido, es vital preservar los lugares más importantes desde el punto de vista de la biodiversidad y eso son las áreas marinas protegidas. Por eso, desde el Europarque Fundación estamos haciendo un llamamiento para que la Comisión Europea priorice la medición del ruido y de los paisajes sonoros submarinos dentro de las áreas marinas protegidas de la Red Natura 2000. Si quieres ayudarnos a proteger los lugares con mayor biodiversidad marina de Europa, firma la petición.